In this piracy server episode, we complete our initial base defenses, get ourselves all moved into our new mountain cave base, use some blocks as sideways for nice stylish additions, and we get graced with a nice little revelation at the end that really isn't a revelation, but still felt like one. All that is coming up right now. The first thing I needed to do was to get my refinery and assembler moved off the skeletal base I acquired from another player and get my production moved into the mountain base. Before doing any serious PvP engagement and risk the retaliation, it's important to get these things inside and secured along with the resources I've gathered so far. So after getting the refinery and assembler moved, I built some storage. For now, I've built three large storage containers and three large hydrogen tanks. My large grid hydrogen miner will be my primary workhorse moving around the planet. So the three large hydrogen tanks for storage will be really important, which meant that I paired those tanks with four hydrogen oxygen generators. I might need more generators, but four to start should be enough to get going. Plus, there are two more H2 generators on board the miner, so we'll just see how that goes. To move the hydrogen I had already stored up in the skeletal platform, along with the resources, I used my mountain excavation drilling rig. This was pretty convenient. All I had to do was place down a hinge head connected to the in-floor conveyor system, extend the piston, and attach the two hinge parts. Speaking of conveyors, the introduction of the reinforced conveyor tubes was an absolute game changer. They definitely rank very high among the most valuable and recent game additions. I mean, it's what allowed me to make this in-floor conveyor system. I can connect other blocks to the side of the tubes and just be a lot more creative with things. I suppose you could make the case that you could do it before with a whole line of conveyor junctions but these are just far superior in my opinion. With all the resources transferred to the relative safety of the base, it was time to make it even more safe. For that, I returned to a bit of mountain boring with a drilling rig, a few pistons and a drill, and I was in business. The plan here was to drill deeply into the mountain underneath the infrastructure of the base and set a line of conveyors outside where I could mount the turret guns of my choosing. Now, I could have just drilled these tunnels out by hand, and maybe it's just me, but I can't seem to get the same perfectly straight, clean tunnels I can get with a drilling rig. The rig, while attached to the grid of the base, also ensures that the center of the tunnel will be aligned with the surrounding grid blocks, and everything will line up in a way I want with the rest of the base conveyor system. So I do highly recommend taking the extra time to set up drilling rigs for this kind of thing. There's really nothing wrong with drilling by hand, but this just feels a lot more precise, if that kind of thing is important to you. Plus, it gives you another thing to tinker with and engineer in the game. For this setup, the outside would hold some Gatlin guns. And I also went with a simple bit of concrete armor blocks around everything to give it that right vibe of sturdiness and defense. I think getting things to look right is also a big part of the creative draw of the game. At least it is for me. Next was to get the big miner parked inside the base. This was actually the first time I had even considered whether it would fit and how I'd park it. I started to just drive it in forward. I couldn't decide if that was the best way. Should I pull it in forwards or back it in? I finally decided that I'm a back it in person, and it just kind of felt like the right way to go. Now, as far as parking, this miner works best and really needs to be elevated on a set of parking blocks. There's a couple reasons for this. First is that if I set the miner flat down on the ground, the vertical thrusters might burn a hole in the floor. The small, large grid thrusters burn two blocks deep. And even though I've left one block free inside of the miner's design, if I'm coming in with a full load of ice or something, 
it would almost certainly damage the floor blocks. The other reason is that I still want to access the underside of the miner, because it's still where my cryo chamber is for logging out. And it's also where my survival kit is for healing. I want to build a separate medical room and cryo or sleeping chamber in the base itself, but I don't have any silver on me. So all that will have to wait until I can steal, uh, I mean, um, acquire some from somewhere. So the miner is in and fits like a glove. It actually takes up more room than I thought it would, but I guess I'm using up some room with the production and storage on one side and then I'm also using the other side for parking up some small ships like my welder, the spy drone, and other little things. I do, though, kind of like the way it fits. It makes the large grid miner seem absolutely massive. And in a way, I think it adds to the interior feel of the base as a pirate hideaway of sorts. So I'm pretty cool with it. Now, with all this refining, assembling, hydrogen conversion, and batteries to charge for more atmospheric flight options, next on the agenda were some better towers and more power. These original towers I threw up got the job done to supply some energy, but they were inadequate to supply the power I needed for my planned stronghold of pyrannical tyranny. They also didn't have the look I wanted, so a makeover began. For this part of the build, the interior of each tower was again one of the beloved reinforced conveyor tubes. And after testing a couple different blocks, the outside was styled with the new automaton interior wall blocks turned on their side. These blocks not only gave the towers some needed physical reinforcement, but after seeing it, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to go back to the single stick of tower blocks again. This just looks so much better and has that same fortress vibe that I hopefully got with the hangar door. These towers were also just right for some top-mounted turrets, and while I was building, the lower platform got extended and fitted with some connectors. With these connectors, I can dock up a small ship or launch my new and improved attack and defense drone that I'll preview in my next video because it also turned out absolutely magnificent. I'll give a detailed rundown of its capabilities then. But this episode and the base needed one more thing to get it defensible, and that is a critical resource upon which all my piracy plans depend. And no, it's not uranium. It's magnesium, of which I have none. But Lady Luck did shine on me a little because right outside my base on the lake just happens to be a small deposit of magnesium that's not too deep. I used my only partially functional drill drone to punch a straight hole down, then hollowed out the area for some initial magnesium with the hand drill. But the engineering mayhem didn't end there. I just had to build a mini mining rig in the little void I'd hollowed out. Now, I don't know why I hadn't thought of this before, but rather than setting batteries on the drill rig and create some sort of energy generator to keep them charged, like a solar panel or wind turbine, I did something completely different. Instead, I used a kind of reverse powering system. I had already decided I'd just reuse my atmospheric welder ship as a carrier for the ore. After all, it had good lift and carrying capacity, but it also had the most critical element for my plan, a battery. Once attached to the connector, the battery on the ship would provide plenty of power back down the conveyors to power the drill. This felt like an absolute revelation in design. And I don't know why, but this idea had just never occurred to me before. I suppose it's because, in almost every other case, I was focused on providing power to the ship and not the other way around. But I have power generators on my other ships, like the big miner, so I don't know. It just was mind-blowing. 
And if you want to see my little mind-blowing attack and defense drone, along with the beginning of my pirate reign of terror, tune in to the next episode, because I'm really excited about what's going to happen. See you next time.